I think, first of all, you know, it's, it's somewhat ironic because if you recall maybe a year ago during the campaign, plus uh, uh, with uh, President Biden's attacks on then President Trump about undisciplined remarks, um, you know, this certainly was something that was uh, either, either it was planned or it was very undisciplined on probably the biggest stage one could imagine. So it's a difficult thing for the White House to clean up, as you see, they are trying to do so. In the end, though, Juliana, I don't think it changes much uh, as far as uh, the progression of, of where things will head. Because as you know, uh, President Biden went into this conflict uh, with, I think, um, a priority of unifying the transatlantic alliance, uh, working with our allies here in Europe and in NATO uh, to present a unified front uh, against Vladimir Putin. And I think he's accomplished that. Uh, but, um, I, you know, and I think long term, that's a good, that's a very good move. However, um, at home, politically, it's not playing the same uh, because poll after poll, I think, has demonstrated that the American people think that Biden has not done enough to counter Vladimir Putin. So we'll see where things head. Um, this comment, again, I think will be um, at some point in the rearview mirror, uh, and we'll see what has to happen, which is I think Vladimir Putin has got to decide what his exit strategy is. What is your take on what the American people do want to see from President Biden if you say polls suggest that he is not taking a strong enough stance? Well, I think what you've seen over the course of the last month or plus is that um, every issue that has come up and the administration has taken on, it has been response to congressional action. Uh, you talk about the ban on Russian energy, the central bank sanctions, the removal of most favored nation status on Russia. All these began in Congress because, frankly, President Biden was trying to unify all the different parties here in Europe. Uh, and that takes a lot of time. And I think the American people said, listen, we got to get tough with you know, this autocratic thug who's sitting here killing tens of thousands of innocent people. It's a difficult balance um, at home, given that the American people are already facing significant cost pressure with inflation where it is, and now the prospect of higher energy prices, um, depending on how this plays out. So uh, surely that is a difficult line for the president to address, trying to take a harder stance, knowing that it could mean uh, more difficulty back home. Well, as you know, Julian, I mean, the, the, the U.S. is much less reliant on Russian uh, oil and gas uh, than Europe is. In fact, I think last year it was only 8 percent of our import. Uh, so, but the reality is it's a global marketplace. And as we've seen, we already had sky high gas prices coming into uh, this year due to the supply constraints and the myriad of other reasons. Uh, but now, once this ban was issued, as you've seen now, at home, we have record high gas prices, over $4 a gallon nationally. Uh, and so I, I do think, you know, the American consumer remains, um, you know, supportive of being tough on Vladimir Putin, but we're just in month one. Uh, and so businesses, uh, consumers, I think, haven't begun to, I think, live with this reality that we're going to have elevated gas prices. So we're going to have to see how that plays out on our economy and obviously uh, in the deal market and the rest. Now, President Biden has clearly taken a different stance when it comes to international uh, organizations uh, versus President Trump. Um, you talked about the restoration of NATO and the unity within that group uh, over the last year or so. What about the U.S.'s position on the world stage? To what extent do you think the U.S. reputation has been restored among other NATO leaders? Well, you know, listen, I, I do think that, and I give credit to the president for, uh, you know, reinvigorating, if you will, the transatlantic alliance. And obviously, Vladimir Putin did much for that to come about, given his brutal invasion uh, of Ukraine. And so there is, I think, now um, a chance to see this sort of uh, uh, recoalescing, if you will, of this alliance. Uh, I hope that Europe is going to step up. Uh, and follow through on some of the commitments that countries like Germany, for instance, have already made to say, yes, we will wean off of Russian oil and gas. Yes, we're going to increase our defense expenditures and not just rely on American security umbrella uh, and going forward. So I, I do think that 
Um, we are at a, at, at a place now where if we can see this transatlantic alliance reinvigorated with a purpose again, uh, with unity in terms of commitment to defend uh, Europe vis-a-vis -vis Vladimir Putin, I'm hopeful that the next step is that what President Biden can do is lead this alliance um, of democratic countries representing the liberal order, if you will, classically liberal order, vis-a-vis -vis the autocratic nations of places like uh, Russia and China. Mm. Um, Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.